Hello everyone, welcome to the Snapdragon Education Project. This video is just going to be a quick video on osmosis and diffusion. These videos are generally meant for my students to help clarify things uh, with a little more time. I teach a freshman biology lab and so the PowerPoint lectures that I give generally have to be short and straight to the point. So here in these videos I like to give a little more clarification, spend a little more time on things that people seem to have trouble with, and so I really hope this helps. So this video is on osmosis and diffusion. A good place to start is, of course, with what is diffusion? Well, diffusion is defined as the movement of a substance from a region of high concentration to a region of lower concentration. And I have a number of examples here on the side. Uh, for instance, oxygen is transported via blood cells and then oxygen diffuses into cells. And you guys know now that its primary purpose is to be the electron acceptor on the electron transport chain and in cellular respiration. And a byproduct of cellular respiration is carbon dioxide, which is gonna diffuse out of those cells and into the bloodstream to ultimately be exhaled from the body. We also have balloons that lose air a little bit each day because the helium is slowly diffusing out of it. And carbon dioxide bubbles in soft drinks also diffuses out of the soda. And one of my personal favorite examples is perfume. When you're spraying perfume on yourself, you're spraying odor particles that are going to diffuse from the region of high concentration around the person who sprayed the perfume to a region of lower concentration, which is why when you step into a bath and body works, it always smells really potent because there are so many people who have been spraying perfumes in that building and then the particles are just diffusing across the building, right? And so you end up getting all these clashing smells together. So that's what diffusion is. So again, diffusion is just the movement of molecules from a region of high concentration to a region of lower concentration. And these molecules have been dissolved in a solution, so they're called solutes. And if you remember from my previous video regarding the physiology of the plasma membrane, the plasma membrane of a cell is selectively permeable, or what we call semi-permeable. So that means that it allows only particular substances through. The substances that it allows to move through without any facilitated help are substances that are rather small, so of a particular size, they also have to be lipid soluble, which means they have to have no charge and they have to be nonpolar. So only lipid soluble substances that are small can move through the plasma membrane without any help. Now diffusion and osmosis are a little different. So if you're just referring to diffusion, this can be the diffusion of odor molecules, dye molecules, etc. Osmosis is specifically the diffusion of water across the selectively permeable membrane. And this is again regarding, for instance, the plasma membrane. So water often will move in or out of the cell depending on the concentration of water that is surrounding the cell. And so here, this is when we begin to talk about isotonic, hypertonic, and hypotonic mediums. These are relative terms that are regarding the, cell, the environment surrounding the cell. Okay, so we're just gonna go through these types of osmotic solutions. I just wanna remind you that these are relative terms. And so you're talking about the inside cellular environment relative to the outside environment, okay? And so if the cellular environment is the same as the outside environment, so they have the same concentration of solutes, that means there should be no movement of water, right? There, there's no net change. And so in the case of a blood cell, if you place blood cells into an isotonic environment, they're gonna look relatively normal because there's no movement of water. Now that's opposed to if we put blood cells into a hypertonic environment. So if we put the blood cells into a hypertonic solution, that means that the outside solution has more solutes and a lower concentration of water relative to the inside of the cell. And so what happens is water is gonna move from the inside of the cell into the outside hypertonic solution, okay? And then ultimately the cell is gonna shrivel as you can see in this picture because it's losing water. 
Now I want to point out the solutes themselves are not moving. Okay. The solutes themselves are not moving across this membrane. It's water, right? The water is moving. These are osmotic solutions and osmosis is the diffusion of water. Okay, so it's water that's moving outside of the cell. Now let's look at a hypotonic solution. So if we place a blood cell into a hypotonic solution, that means that the solution has fewer solutes than the inside of the cell. Right, so the inside of the cell, in this example, it would be hypertonic relative to the outside hypotonic environment, right? Because these are relative terms. And so if the outside of the cell is hypotonic, that means water is going to move in to the hypertonic environment that is inside the cell that is going to cause the cell to expand and basically it's going to lyse. In the case of a blood cell, it's going to explode because all that water has come in causing the cell to expand. Okay, these terms are relative and again it's just the movement of water. Now you can look at the same thing in plant cells. The only difference is, is that plant cells have a cell wall. And so what, hap what happens, sorry, that was a little Southern. What happens to a plant cell is gonna be a little different, okay? So you guys know that there's a vacuole that's holding water, water on the inside of a plant cell. And if you were to place a plant cell into a hypotonic environment. So now the outside of the cell is hypotonic. That means the inside of the plant cell is hypertonic. Then water from the hypotonic solution is going to move into the cell. And in the case of a plant cell, it causes the cell to become turgid or it causes tension that's as a result of the pressure of the cell contents pushing against that cell wall. So in the case of a blood cell, it's going to lyse. In the case of a plant cell, it becomes turgid. Now, if you place that cell in a hypertonic solution, then water from the inside of the cell is going to move out, right? And then the plant cell is gonna become plasmalized. If you put the cell into an isotonic solution, then it's what we call flaccid because it's just, it's relatively normal, but it's not rigid, it's not supported, right? And also in the case of animal cells, I just want to point out that we call the shriveling of an animal cell, we call that crenation, right? And when water moves into the cell and causes it to burst, that's called lysis, okay? Lysis is just the destruction of cells due to a buildup of pressure. Okay, so that is just a quick overview of osmosis and diffusion.